unless we get up and get into the competition, we're going to get lost. We're going to be subsumed somewhere into Europe and we're going to be a forgotten island on the periphery where occasional tourists go. But most of the living is done of crumbs from the European table. And the current regime we have in Dáil Éireann are only interested in the prestige of government. They want to be in an, uh, the um, Security Council, the UN Security Council. That's their main goal at the moment. Now, not all of you will know that, but that's generally uh, where they're really pushing for. Of course, they'll deny that. So, what I'm asking you here is, and again, of course, in case someone <laughs> is under the impression I'm just giving a lecture, I'm looking for your vote. This is a, a political uh, statement from me, in search of your vote. Now, you, you want someone that can um, talk about innovation, can um, help, can light the fire in the belly as opposed to uh, underneath the nation. Um, or you can decide uh, with the status quo and remain in helplessness. Now you decide, you've lived the life, you've looked. In the last hundred years in this country, give or take a few events and maybe a small improvement, what have we really accomplished here? We still have the same cries. Our health service is no good. Um, our educational service, everyone is saying it's great. I can tell you, I've worked all over the world and I can tell you it's not. It's not the worst, but it's certainly not what everyone has claimed it to be. Right? We have people who are going in the public service who are going into jobs and it's just a job to them. There's no commitment. And that manifests itself, that lackadaisical attitude manifests itself in our services. Right? There's 20% of the people doing 80% of the work. So I want you to consider as we go through what I'm going to say now, the, the lifestyle you have at the moment. And more importantly, maybe the lifestyle you want for the next generation of your family. Okay, let's we move on. Who should have responsibility for all that? This is the question. Now, you can see we can have family businesses. We can have uh, businesses that are owned by, you know, the markets. We can have uh, production companies that are family owned, family orientated. And we have the capitalist economy who these big players who move all this money around to gain uh, more market share, more wealth for themselves. Now, the point I make here, and if anyone out there in, the, in Ireland today, or anyone that watches this from any place in the world on YouTube, if you feel you want to contradict what I'm going to say now, be my guest. And let's get down to both of us proving who's right and who's wrong. Okay? All these movers and shakers in the world, and they're good, diligent people, a lot of them, they examine risk, they don't want to lose money, they want to do their business very well. They all depend on your money. When I say your, our money. The money that goes into the bank. I put money... I put a thousand euros into the bank, the bank turns around and makes 20 out of it. The 19 may be real money. They can call on it if it's really necessary. But for the most part, it's not real money. But the money you pay back to them in interest is real money that you earn. So they're taking a slice of the economy fraudulently in my opinion. Now, you can use a different word, and you can say, you know, we have that banking system that's legal here. And I say, fine. But when you really look at it, and look at what they're doing, they're draining you. And what they're draining you of is your wealth. The wealth that you create from the time you get up in the morning 
to the time you go to sleep. And one of the big problems in society today, the argument is wealth distribution. You feel that you're not getting it. Well, I can tell you that you are getting it, but you're not keeping it. And it's been siphoned away from you on the QP, all under the auspices of, oh, we're very diligent, hard workers, financiers. So I want you to again keep this in mind. Now, I think you do well. The economic system. <clears throat> you produce something, you examine the risk. All wealth is created within risk. The way you spell opportunity is R I S K. If you're in business and you spell it any other way, you're a fool. You're going to lose everything you have. You mitigate for that risk. The creation of business is the creation of risk. The creation of good business is the mitigation for that risk. To give yourself every chance of getting started. Now, what has been in this country and other countries in Europe, uh, when somebody wants to get a business going, oh, we run to the government and we get a grant. First method that your money has been siphoned off you. There's grants for everything. But it's your money that they tax to give. That's not fair. It's an unfair advantage. People are getting a competitive advantage over you because they're getting grants. They're getting subsidies. They're getting tax breaks. This is wrong and it's taken away the true reflection of the market. Now the reason I'm talking like this to you is to lead you to the point where you'll understand what I'm going to say to you in the last five minutes of this presentation. And this is what I am running my whole campaign for election on. I will be pushing this at every minute of every day if I am representing you Dollar. I will be asking this question of all the money moguls of all these other TVs who stand up to start helping others. The questions I will be asking you will see towards the end of this presentation. Now, it's, you know, there's no big secret. You have an idea, it's, unless you're able to bring it in reality into existence, a viable concern, what you have is not an idea. It's a kind of a dream, a nightmare, an illusion. But you, you have to put meat around that, and in the meat, you mitigate for the risk. Now, over we we'll say the last 50 years, we won't go back too far, we'll go back 50 years. And I want people in a hundred years time to look at the history that we're going to create for the next 50 years and say, thank God they turned it around then. They really understood what was happening. They understood how to distribute wealth properly. And what we have here, we, you know, we have um, industry, we have the personal, and now we have industry moving into your living room, moving into your computer. Everywhere you go, you're seeing it now. Right? You can take time later on your own, watch this, have a look at those slides, see if you can understand them more. I'll take any questions from you, either on email or on my website, uh, donaldjackson.com, in case any of you want to, to tip into it. I'm going to get into this more, but we have to prepare ourselves for the onslaught that's coming. If we don't, we're going to be in serious trouble. As I said, we're going to be farther on the periphery of Europe that get a few crumbs from the tables of Brussels and Frankfurt. Globalization. What does it mean? What it means simply is it allows major companies to operate in different countries at the same time answerable to one headquarters, if you like. Now, I can't put it simpler than that. There's a whole 
you know, you fill Croke Park with the number of books that are written on this and how to deal with this. But in my opinion, coming, it comes down to that basic. The, the super company, which, in case some of you are getting the wrong idea, I applaud. These are wonderful uh, companies, made great by really good people, men and women, over many, many years. They've built their brand up. And they are part, they are an integral part of how we're living our lives. But right now, and for the last 50 years, they're taking too much of the wealth that you're generating. And we've got to change that around. And they're using the medium of another group. And the other group are the bankers who produce nothing, who make nothing. They live off your hard sweat. Now again, you can argue that with me, I don't mind, but you lose. We're all civilized people. We learn how to deal with each other. Why is it the medium that we deal in take all the money that we generate, all the finance that we generate? Call it another thing, the wealth that we're trying to build. We never get past the foundation drawing, never mind the foundation itself. We, what I'm going to suggest will allow us to put in the foundation to build our wealth down. And let me say, when we look at these great companies, and we look at some people that are very wealthy in the world, now, you know, with, with the computer, lots of guys got these fads that copped on these mobile phones, you know, all that. Everyone has used it now, it's, uh, they're all ubiquitous tools, and, and that's fine. But they've made a lot of money from that. And some of the patents are running out now, you have uh, the generic companies coming in, starting to offer different things, and the competition is starting to get in there now. But these lads have moved on, they've made huge sums of money, and they're investing in, in other places as well. That's great. That's, that's wonderful. But it can't be at the expense of you not being able to build your own wealth for yourself, and for your family as you see it. Now, listen carefully to that, because that's an important statement. As you see it, you have to be educated enough to see this. You have to be educated enough to sustain your input. Now, if you don't want to do that, nobody's twisting your arm. You can opt for someone else to do it for you. And as you can see, I allow for that. And you can be that little bit more relaxed in what I'm going to propose. How do we connect? We connect, as I've said, through our education. We have all our good uh, academic institutions. They put on the courses, we go and learn. We interact with these companies. Some of them will come in looking for universities to do the research for them. And we have to be careful there, because when that research is done, they're taking the patents and they're putting 20-year program, 20-year protections on those patents. This is wrong if the research has come from the university. Now, we're getting our bit as well there, because the university students are learning. They're the ones that are being educated. And the, the, the programs, the research programs that the companies want, are the vehicles for doing it all. And there's a give and take there. And I agree with that. However, the take is too big. The reason there was 20 year periods of patent was because of the cost of the company doing all the research, producing the product, and the mitigation of the risk was the patent. They had 20 years to get all this money back. Now they don't. The risk is in the education. They have shifted the risk in a very good way to suit us. But they're still getting that long-term pit. And this is what I object to. Now that's food for talk for you. Again, it's not something that I'm going to get too much into for now. It's an important subject. But I don't want it to interfere with what I want to say to you. You can see where we're connected. It's a, it's a simple little demonstration here.
As I said, whoever takes the risk takes the reward. And if anyone looking tonight thinks that they're entitled to some of that reward without taking any of the risk, they're wrong. They're what everyone is calling, oh, the greedy financiers. These guys take a risk every day of the week with their money. If the investment they make doesn't work, they lose their money. Now, they were the rules. And you'll say to me, but those rules changed back in 2008. And I will agree with you. I'll agree 100% with you. And that's what made a lot of people start thinking that there has to be something different now. Because as soon as it falls again, they're going to come back the very same way looking for your money again. You know, they don't have any money of their own, they're using yours, so you're the one giving the guarantees for their investments. And you see a lot of it going around through insurance companies as well. So, again, just keep that in mind. The question, how do we become involved now? Where well, we take charge of our own destiny. The day for walking aimlessly around, oh, I'm sure all those politicians, they're all crooked. And all those guys who run these companies, they're all criminals. The day for that is gone. It's certainly gone from this country. And you, the more you say that, the more and more isolated you will find yourself. Nobody wants to be in your company for someone that talks like that. So you have to be very careful. And you, you, you've got to understand and open yourself up to what I'm about to say. Self-administration of our own wealth. I have a little slide here that shows you a champagne glass. Now, for those of you that understand a small bit about hydraulics and pressure, the red top of that is keeping the pressure on the blue bottom. It's also keeping the pressure on the green and the yellow. But they're keeping the pressure on the blue. And that's where the poor are. It's all the one wine that's in the glass. These guys are taking the lion's share of it all the time and you're propping them up. And when things become hard for them, they come back to the people that you vote for and say, can I have everyone's money? It doesn't get easier than that. I can't explain it an easier way. And at the last time in 2008, the Fianna Fáil government turned around and said, the whole lot. We will give you the whole lot. We will give you the next 50 years. And from then we've seen little things happening over that period of time. And now it's starting to come full circle again. And Fianna Fáil are back knocking on the door again. Oh, trust us now. You put us out the last time, but trust us now. Let us back in again and we'll be different. The leopard is back at the window. He's looking in the window and he's knocking at the door at the same time. And they'll be very, very clever about it. I'll ask you just to be careful about it. Now, self-administration, how do we do this? What I propose is, the system that they engaged to take all this money and give it to themselves and our guarantee, we just continue with that system. And I say to people, there's the house, I'll solve the housing problem. There's the house. It's valued at 300,000. There's the 300,000 to buy it, or there's the 300,000 to have it built. But you must pay. If you don't pay, this is only going to get worse. If you say you want this, you want some of the reward with no risk, and you want some of the reward at someone else's expense, doesn't exist anymore. It cannot exist anymore. So I'm saying to you, I'm giving you the money. My proposal would be take the figure of 300,000, right? It can come up or down after discussion, right? Depending on that. <clears throat> no interest. Pay back the capital sum over the 40 years. Now you have a property that's worth an awful lot of money. As you pay off the amount and the value of the property grows, it grows up. 
nearly by the same amount of common staff. So your wealth is expanding on that margin, on that spread, from where it's up to where you've reduced it. Now, in return for that, what you will have towards your retirement age, you're sitting on an asset that you've got great help with, and now you have a lot of very well-educated people knocking at your door, asking you how you propose to control that asset. They want to get involved and make investments on your behalf, the value of which, the return on investment, that normally going into the banks, is now going in to your pocket to take further payment off that money, or maybe roll it into another investment. You might need a little bit more for a retirement village you're looking at. And the house you have is making the payments for you for your retirement because it's your house. But the payment you make for that, for me, is your expectancy of old age pension. It's gone. Within 20 years of today, it will be gone anyway. We can't afford it. Nobody can. All the private sector pensions, they're all changing now. And be assured, be absolutely sure of what I'm saying here. Don't look back in 20 years' time and say, I should have done that. You have to do it now. Now, if you don't want to vote for me because you don't like the way I talk or you don't like the attitude I have, which I don't apologize for, by the way, you can vote for so as long as you're getting them to do what I'm suggesting. Otherwise, you're at nothing. You will be coming towards retirement depending on what we have at the moment. Oh, I'll, I'll get your hip operation. All you have to do is, is, is vote for me. And when he moves you up or she moves you up that list to get your hip done, don't forget this. Somebody else is getting knocked off. Think about that. And if you don't know the politician and he's doing it for someone else, the someone else that's getting knocked off could be you. It could be your brother, sister. Because of the system that's there now. They'll keep you in penury if you continue to do the business the way they want it at the moment. If you change to the way I want it, and I want you to think about this. If you change to the way I want it, you will be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And the closer it gets, the bigger it gets. And there's nothing can stop you now. All these financiers, they need your permission to invest your money. Right now, in the bank, the bank can put your house at risk on an investment they'll make. And if it fails, they'll come back crying through some of these cowardly uh, politicians to get you paying again. That's the system. They changed it. In 2008, they changed it. All I'm saying is, okay, what's good for the goose has to be good for the gander. And this is the way we go forward on the investments. Now you take your time. And <clears throat> if you have a look at that slide I put up there, all the movement you notice, green or red, goes through the household. You're the household. Imagine what can be done if they can't do anything without your permission. And the person that's telling you that it's okay for you to do this has to have his or her indemnity insurance in place in the event that it doesn't work out. So where's the risk for you? We've mitigated the risk and you're building the wealth. And at the end of the day, I hear it now, oh, you know, it was introduced Badly, a few years ago, uh, this fair deal will take 50%. There was a hue and cry over this that was heard everywhere, and it was wrong. 
The intention was good. Execution, as was with the water metering, was wrong. Uh, as was with the flotation of aircom, was wrong. Think about this. These are the people that you have in government. They were wrong. They came along with SSIAs a few years ago to refinance the banks on the QT. And just think about what they said. If you can save, at the end of the period, we we'll put 20% or 25%, I can't remember what it was now, in on top of what you have. So what was that saying to the people at the bottom of the champagne glass? Who couldn't save. The people in the yellow on the champagne glass who could not save. I don't want to use bad language here, but there's a couple of words that come to mind that I could say. Think about that. It's important. And it's back again. It's rolling again. It's rolling again. And you have to do something about it. Now, I guarantee you, the best thing you can do about it is put me in dull iron. Because I'll hold the sessions outside the gates of dull iron. I won't be looking for the protection of dull iron. If I have something to say to someone, I'll say it to their face with proof. There'll be no hiding behind different amendments that protect my um, oligniciousness, for the want of a better term. There's nothing slithery here. All these people that I'm showing you here, they will all work for you now. They'll all be looking for commissions for what they do. And I say, thank God you're looking for commissions. But here's the rule. You can't get the commission until we see the fruition. But here's what I'll allow you to do. I'll allow you to sell it to a bigger company. A bigger company that will scrutinize what they're doing and say, yeah, that's a good investment, that's going to sell. So I give you 60% of your commission now. And we'll wait for the 100% until it matures. All these companies here are the ones that are going to be working for you. And you'll notice some of the names there all these asset, wealth asset managers, they're all very popular guys, they're head up all these wonderful banks. You start doing this, I guarantee you, you start seeing all these banks getting an awful lot smaller, very, very quickly. And what they'll be saying in the boardrooms is, that's, they've copped out of what we're doing. They're doing it for themselves now. We have to start working with their money, but now they're getting the bulk of the return we make. That's what I want you to think about. And that's what you get into trouble for what you think you know is true that just isn't so. And when you're all out there believing what you read on the internet and Google, which 99.999% of is absolute unadulterated rubbish, just think about this. Give yourself a little time. Experts don't make as many mistakes as people who are not experts. Keep that in mind as well. Next time I talk, we're going to talk about the environment and how we can think about the environment in a viable way. It doesn't cost you the earth. You might make money off it.